Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. Today we're gonna do another photo mode review. Uh, this week has been crazy. We had Hogwarts Legacy 1. I let you check the video I did just a few days ago. It was really good. And today we have one that was really, really weighted. It's Alan Wake 2 photo mode. So Remedy, they have been successful with their photo mode before with controls it was not a great photo mode but the game itself is just so appealing that the community is killing it for years now so obviously when they announced the Alan Wake 2 photo mode there was a big big expectation on it and it's finally there it's really good so we're gonna check it out in details because there are some some stuff to be said for today's episode again we'll be using geforce now thank you uh, geforce to providing me first of all that game that's geforce who provided me this game uh, thank you again and also the access to geforce now yeah it's it's very important that we use geforce now and you'll understand in a minute why get yourself comfortable my name is shinobi i'm a virtual photographer and i've been doing some photo mode consultant jobs in the past by the way i did propose uh, my help on alan wake 2 it was not needed and definitely yeah i think they did really pretty good without me so let's dive into it <laughs> Alright, so to open the photo mode you have two possibilities, if you're on PC you can simply press P, that is the default shortcut that is set for photo mode. If you use a game controller or you play on console though you don't have a shortcut on the control pad, you have to go to pause menu and then go down five times, which is a lot, one, two, three, four, five, uh, to open the photo mode. It's kind of a lot for an option that will ask you to go to the pause menu. That's definitely something that we will have to do every time. So five click down is a, is a bit, it's a bit of a lot. Uh, but um, you know, if we could just go up from the the first option and go circle down, it it would be just two clicks away. So it it would already be better. But you can, so you really have to click five times. Anyways small detail but you know i'm here for that so when you open the photo mode you have this uh pretty busy ui busy because it's it's really scattered all over the place on uh, on the screen which is not always the case so that's interesting choice it's not terrible just right behind my head here you have the let me see you have the presets camera effects lighting and frame tabs those are the main tabs of the photo mode and we will go through them uh, one by one so the presets one is really interesting maybe i've seen this before but i'm not sure where and uh, maybe you know like kind of horizon forbidden west uh, type of lens presets uh, i think it, it, it comes close but this is a this is a bit more uh, of it. So you have the landscape preset. That is the, oh, it's not the basic camera actually. It's not the basic one, but close. So macro one will be just as it suggests, uh, all the settings already ready for a macro picture. So let's see how close is the, yeah, the DOF is here. So yeah, it's ready for macro. <laughs> and it's it's pretty well made you can still go closer it's not the closer uh, settings with the higher doff it's not like that it's a really thought through uh, macro se setting so it's it's pretty interesting you have the portrait one now unfortunately the portrait one will not turn your your frame vertically and uh, you know it could have been this it could have been super smart to have one that turn your your display if you will just vertically so you can compose without breaking your neck everyone knows this if you use the photo mode before and it would still take the shot like at the proper size and stuff it, it would be nice but okay it's just the setting that will allow you to be at that distance but yeah, it's, it's still nice to have a quick way to just 
go to those settings. You have the evidence photo that is interesting because it gives you one of the frames that is in the game. So, you know, it, it already creates everything needed to get the this evidence photo that is something you have in a game, of course. And you have the Alice photo, also different types of photos you, you come uh, across in the game. And it goes like this with a specific filter that we will talk about in a moment. So those presets are cool. Note that if you do your own settings and then you accidentally or not uh, choose one of those settings, it will reset all yours. You, you won't be able to go back on, on anything you, you did. So yeah, be careful with that. So just before going through the tabs up there, I want to make a tour of everything we see on the on the UI. So obviously, just right be below me, you have those uh, settings. Let's go up, up there at the opposite up right part. So you have the grid on and off option, uh, which is really nice, but there is just one small but when you hide the interface, which is, by the way, the, the next uh, prompt, it hides the grid. So it's, you know, it's it's OK because the, the it's not like Hogwarts Legacy where half of the screen is taken by the UI. Here you still have space to to see your your overall composition. But still, I, I like to have my full cleared view with the with the grid to just compose my shot properly so being able to hide the ui and not the grid like hogwarts did is pretty good good also well as usual in those grids i'd like to have a point that marks the center uh, because sometimes you you need to find the, the exact center and we have nothing to do this on this photo mode um also of course grids you know like now it, it used to be my my fight to to put grids in in photo modes now it looks like uh, we have a lot of grids now what would be cool would be to have other types of grid uh it's not just rule of thirds guys there are a lot of grids uh fibonacci you know uh, it, it would be nice to have a bit more choices there but okay at least we have one grid then you have the exit button, exit, you, you need to hold it. This is really something that annoys me personally, but this one, you don't need to hold it too long, like compared to Survivor or Hogwarts Legacy again. Um, this one, it, it, it's pretty quick to close, so it's okay. But And then down there, you have a focus option that is autofocus, and uh, I'm telling you right away, it doesn't work. It's 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 weird. So if you press R3, uh, you should be able to have the, the focus point made on your center, I guess, because it's actually not clear where the, the, the dove point is. But let's see if you have it. I did press now and it does not do anything. If you go closer, okay, you catch it. I caught, I caught the, the hand, but it's really hard to know what you're actually putting your point on. Now it should be on the face and I press, I press, but it doesn't make her face clear, um, sharp. So it does look at this. I'm sharp now on the nose at least. And if I press the focus, autofocus button, it will be blurred again so yeah it doesn't work well um, and sometimes it can messes up your actual settings so I, I wouldn't recommend recommend to use this uh, unless they fix a bit and they, they make it clearer what we are focusing on uh, or if it catches the actual object we are focusing on right next to this we have a very interesting thing it's uh, the choice between free camera um, that is the case right now. It's a free cam. We'll talk about the range in a minute. But you also can choose orbital cam uh, going around Saga or uh, Alan, of course. Now, you know, I would 
I will never understand how we can use an orbital cam in a photo mode. It makes no sense to me. Uh, the free cam is able to go everywhere an orbital cam can. So, but okay, at least we have the choice here. And the, the default position is the free cam. So there is no reason for me ever to press L3. But if someone wants to, be my guest. You have the choice. Then you have the take a picture button uh, that is square. If you take a picture, it will hide the UI. It will make a, a click sound and uh, and the, the picture will be saved uh, somewhere on your PC. I'm not sure where. I'm sorry, guys, if you are looking for that because I use G GeForce now. So it's now saved somewhere in the world. And uh, maybe I should cover this right now. By the way, if you want to take a picture with GeForce now, we have a problem. Uh, the default settings, I guess it's you can change that, but I mean, you know, if you use GeForce Now every day to play a, any game, you don't want, you might not want to change your settings. The default settings to take a picture is Control 1, all right? Now, if you press Control in this photo mode, you go down. It's it's the, the down, the crane down key, all right? And the space bar is the up one. Right. There is no way at the moment to change that. You cannot rebind your PC photo mode keys, meaning that you literally cannot take a shot on GeForce Now if you just want to take it with the, the, the default settings for anything. So I did send a message yesterday, right after I discovered this, uh, I sent a message to Kyle Rowley, the co-director of the game, and he answered me within 10 seconds, uh, saying that he will look into it with the, with the team. So hopefully it will be fixed uh, quick. But, I mean, you can set different ways to shoot your game, I guess. Uh, it's no big deal. It's really just a problem for people using GeForce now. But, you know, I think it, it, it was worth mentioning. Up, down, the crane movements are on the triggers, which is cool. We saw uh, this week with the Hogwarts Legacy that it was not great there, but here, no problem at all. All right, so that being said, let's dive into the actual uh, settings. Camera will be the, the first tab. Um, I'm not completely sold on the way they organized the, the the settings in each tab but you know it's definitely something you can just get used to so we start with the DOF setting it's the first one you have on the list I think it's weird but okay whatever so if you if you go at the minimum value which is the strongest DOF you have the 0.4 and you can already see on the hand, for instance. Now you can see the, the contour of the hand being a bit sharp. You know, it doesn't, the dove doesn't catch everything. I mean, yeah, it happens in, in games. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the shape of the bokeh e either, but that's just me. And the quality, overall quality of the 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 blur is not the best i've seen in a game let's let's just say that but but i mean it's not terrible either you can see some wait can i i mean if you change the lens it will it will make the blur a bit better if you're in close-up it works better so it's it's not bad for portraits and stuff like this so okay so f-stop it goes up to f64 then you have the lens uh setting that is just the fov the field of view so you can open it to eight millimeter it's expressed in millimeters so just like a real camera uh, eight millimeter it's the widest angle and you can see some distortion of course on the on the lens and the maximum maximum zoom in telefocus is 200 so it's it's really it's really close you you can do really really 
close, 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 close up like this. Okay, so it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You can catch the actual point of focus at 0.5 millimeters, you know, at the maximum value. But if you go down the values of the DOF, it's so small that you cannot really get a focus point properly. It, it's, yeah. You can have it on the on the eyelashes, I guess. Wait, <laughs> it's uh, another little problem is that we don't have uh, a precise mode for the camera movement, and yeah, in that type of super close-up scenario, it's really hard to move sometimes. Um, so yeah. All right, I don't. I don't get it, but whatever. Um, you get the point. You can do super, super sh close ups, and it's really cool. Okay, next is exposure. So you'll see that we also have a brightness setting that operates differently. So here is the exposure. It goes super, I mean, it goes to three and goes down to minus three, which is pitch black almost. And you'll see that's a very important uh, setting to have. Just below the exposure, you get the tilt and the tilt, guys, it's a full 180 degrees right and left. So you really can cover every single uh, angle, which is cool. Sometimes, sometimes, only sometimes in certain compositions, you need to go beyond the the 90 degrees because you just want to align something create a false perspective or whatever uh, but yeah you definitely can here one little thing annoying that you do you don't have a reset button or like reset this setting you know button so you you do have to go all the way up and down if you want to test some stuff if you forgot what was the basic uh, numbers when you opened and you liked your settings or whatever it's a bit annoying it's, it's no big deal but it's a bit annoying let's try the camera distance shall we sorry it took so long this is the maximum distance you can go it's not bad at all it's not bad at all all right you know what i'm gonna say it's not enough it's not enough we we want more we could have a bit more not not too much more but you know it's definitely decent and you can work some pretty good landscape and environmental shot like this with a bit of open fov so it's okay it's okay happy with that and then we're gonna change the tab go to the effect tab so this one will I, i'm gonna try to keep it short actually because that's the biggest one but uh it's pretty straightforward so you start with the filters you have bright falls it's warm watery it's sharp bright dark place it's green cold drone lake is blue dark presence is the negative one and dfs is warm saturated one okay i'm gonna be a bit harsh here but i think they are not really interesting none of them are and it's a bit of disappointment compared to control filters now you know me guys i'm not a big filter user but still i i really think that on control photo mode they had among the smartest filters ever because they were really playing with the, the game aesthetic and you know this videotape one amazing and i was really expecting a bit more creativity here sorry to say so the dark presence for instance i mean yeah it makes sense within the game but how many shots will be taken with this i mean on a photographic aspect it, it's not really useful so yeah i was expecting one you know with the the weird distortions effects and stuff when you go to the dark dark place a bit of a, a disappointment here when i saw the 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 visuals they shared a few days ago i saw the dark place name on the filter and i was oh yeah okay you you will play with those effects and stuff but no it's just a basic settings filters too bad contrast okay um it, it it's a contrast 
thing i'm not gonna really go into it, it it's okay it goes really dark really quick uh, it also accentuate a bit the saturation if you if you put the contrast at max so you want to balance this with the actual saturation setting uh, bright so brightness is a bit different from exposure we will touch on what is exactly different in a minute So go back to the neutral 50. Okay, saturation, nothing to say here. It, it works well, it's a saturation. It doesn't go too far. Uh, it doesn't go crazy and it goes full black and white. By the way, on Hogwarts Legacy, I said it was going full black and white. I noticed that someone else, uh, Jack, did uh, his review and it was not going full black and white. I tested again and uh, and in certain environment it doesn't go full black and white indeed so mea culpa saturation here goes to full black and white so it's cool then you have the lens distortion which is interesting um you have this you know spherical effect fish eye effect if you want why not i guess it can be useful for some situation and you have this one that creates a big big distortion on the vignette vignette why not why not vignette it's a vignette <laughs> um it it's pretty strong it goes pretty strong you can take it completely off i, I wish it was at zero from the beginning but uh, at least film grain is film grain you know nothing break groundbreaking here um it doesn't really show on my on, on my settings right now but there is some grain happening fine radial blur it's interesting it's it's not not all often that we have this so it just creates uh this effect on the you know on the it's like a vignette of radial blur so why not it can be helpful for some shot like action shots and stuff and then we have the fogginess this here is great this is the actual best feature here in my opinion um you know i always say that a good photo mode needs to understand its own game and to have some uh, some settings really specific to this game like lord of the fallen did or stuff like this and definitely the fog in alan wake is very important so being able to put super strong fog is really cool now the one thing that i regret is that you cannot take off the actual fog in the game so yesterday i was uh, uh, on the spot where i wanted to take a, a shot this shot and it's foggy there it's foggy and i was hoping to be able to take off the fog with this fogginess setting but no the minimum settings was still the the default game setting so yeah a bit of uh, disappointment here but okay really cool to have uh, fogginess then you have height player and height characters so i'm sorry i'm not around people so um, I cannot say for sure, but I guess it just hides everyone. If you have different, a lot of different characters, you will hide everyone. Let's go to the lighting effect tab. Um, first of all, it's worth noting that once you go on the lighting effect, you cannot move your camera anymore. You, you are set to the light. All right, so we do have custom lights in this game. Now, it's uh, not the usual and it's, it's kind of, it's interesting and it's uh, mixed feelings, but it's interesting. So you have these uh, different types of light. You have camera flash, you have portrait spot and you have flashlight, all right? Now you cannot combine them. You cannot use uh, all of them, you have to choose, which is the first negative point uh, for me. 
The portrait spot, let's talk about this one right away. It's one spot. So you cannot create three point light system. It's just one, okay? So again, yeah, too bad. But let's go back to the first camera flash one. We go in order. So camera flash, it's actually a camera flash, you know? So it's, it works like we, what we have on this loop. It's just a flash that will light anything that is in front of you, okay? Just like a camera flash. You can still move it. You can still move it. Uh, you can see right now I'm moving it. Uh, but you cannot... Wait, let me make sure of that. You cannot move it around, okay? You can move just the, the circle like this but you cannot move it around all right you can play on the intensity and you can see that it's it goes really strong so you can light up a full place with no problem now it does have uh, a volumetric lighting that makes it a bit bloomy but yeah you can light some stuff far away with this I guess you can change the color now the color are settings and it's just four settings it's really not a lot so you have red you have blue you have yellow and if you don't like this blue well you're effed because you cannot you cannot custom your your color that's really that's really a, a bummer for me and you'll see it, it's the same for any any type of light. Portrait spot, as you can see now, it's actually indeed uh, a spot, a spotlight. This one is orbital, all right? So it works like uh, the, the left stick will do the, the, the distance. You can go closer or further. That's the two maximum values here. And then the left stick, the right stick, sorry, the right stick will be the rotation and it rotates around the character in an orbital way. So, you know, that's a lot, a lot of angles that you will not be able to get properly. I wish, I wish we have the, the same spot movements than Hellblade. You just want your spot to move freely like a free cam so you can go anywhere uh, if you want to light just the boots you can light just the boots because here you can't you have to go up there or you know find a, an angle is really complicated to light the boots it's just on the face basically so yeah no not great seriously sorry okay be besides this you have still the uh, intensity very bloomy you cannot take off this bloom uh, anywhere in the photo mode that's a bit of a shame and you can go off again the colors presets four settings the source radius now is um you can play on the the size of the source itself so it will make a bigger bigger spotlight obviously and the field of view also widen up this. All right, so you can go as big as this. And more interestingly to me, you can go super small. If you close both, you can go super small dot closer to show you. You can go that small, actually. I mean, it's very useful when you have a lot of light sources available because you can make catch lights like this or you can make small details pop up. Here you just have one camera, so one light source. So yeah, it's very limited uh, use, but okay. That's the way you can act on the lights. Now, the last one, the flashlight, it's interesting because it's just like the name says it's a flashlight so it's another spotlight you know this one is free so you can move it around it's not orbital 
but <laughs> there's the catch. Well, first of all, you cannot combine it. As I said, you cannot combine it with the portrait spot. So it's, it's a waste and it's textured. It's textured like the flashlight is, hence the name of flashlight. So it has its use, of course. You, you can use this to make a lot of possible uses, but, but I wish we could just take off the texture and use it as a second spotlight, at least, you know. Uh, but yeah, you can go with the same settings like intensity, the color, same, and the uh, source radius, make it, make it it wider at the source. Uh, you know, just the same as the spotlight, but with a flashlight texture. So yeah, I mean, it's a good idea on paper, but how we will actually use this how many scenarios will be this light useful it's very small it would have been easier actually to just give different light so light sources available in the you know for instance the portrait spot you just put like three four five different spots and then you give the possibility to texturize with the flashlight texture just one option like this you know so it, it would have been a, a good opportunity and I, I feel like the lighting tab here is full of good intentions but yeah and let's finish with the frame tab so f you have no frame Polaroid those are we we saw this this one in the preset uh, earlier I really like them I think they really fit the world perfectly you have photo so again it's you know a case photo you have the alice one you have postcard and postcard i just noticed that there is just one postcard or maybe it changes according to the place you are huh i didn't check that guys sorry so yeah maybe and then you have the crop uh options so it's one by one five by four two by one I'm not gonna lie uh, it's a bit weird choice to have those three it, it feels like a random i mean i guess it, it fits instagram or whatever um it's not the usual uh aspect ratio we use but okay all right so to conclude this overall it's a really good photo mode i'm not gonna say otherwise i think uh, it gets the basic covered like the camera distance is good uh, it's a free cam we do have some interesting new stuff in the presets tab i think it's very convenient to use for people who want to take a, a quick uh, quick shot um, I do think it misses the mark on the lighting uh, part. It, it could have been much more useful, but but uh, there is a lighting tab. There there are possibilities to make custom light, so it's really a step up, definitely. You know, it it could have been just a bit more. The the. The filters are a bit disappointing to me as well, but again, I don't think it's really vital to have great filters in a photo mode. I don't think it's very important for us virtual photographers. You know, it's more for casual photographers. No disrespect at all. So yeah, no big deal, no big, big bummer, but some small stuff uh, that could have been made a bit differently and maybe they will maybe they will um, patch some stuff you know it's uh, we we know that remedy is super uh, super attentive to virtual photography world they've they've been super supportive uh, so far and i have no reason to believe that they, it will change so i'm very excited to see if something will be updated on this still 
a great photo mode really happy to have this this week it, it has been crazy recently we have some really really good contestant for best photo mode of the year i think it will be very interesting this year uh, vp awards that's it for me please subscribe to the channel if you are not a subscriber yet and you enjoy photo mode virtual photography content because i'm doing this a lot check out the other videos i've put up if you want to know more about me find me on twitter or x and uh, check out my website all the links are down below also drop a like and a comment tell me how happy you are about all those great photo modes we have recently and specifically this one and you know as usual i'll see you in the next video or on the next picture and in the meantime keep snapping bye guys